it could have been if this unit was stored up in a loft for many years that this the dust the amount of dust in here uh, got damp and it caused some kind of electrical uh, continuity or shorting problem inside um, that caused the unit not to switch on it's a potential possibility the best thing to do is to remove all the dust before we get to the point of um, dismantling the unit and cleaning all the boards off properly and doing a, a closer inspection and for that it's just a matter of using uh, as the first stop gap using a vacuum cleaner and a brush and just brushing off all the loose stuff so I'm going to do that first Okay, so the unit has been um, cleaned. The was disconnected during that time. We need to access underneath the boards now to do a visual inspection and to continue the clean. Uh, but before we do that, I always take some photographs of the interior, uh, especially all the cable connections. When you start putting things about, you could dislodge uh, a cable from somewhere and you've got a point of reference to go back to if you've got some photographs of the internals to um, work out where the cables came from. Could save a lot of time in the future. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I now start the dismantling stage. Let's turn this around. I've undone some of the screws at the back um, but looking inside this plate here seems to be the heat sink for the power amplifier stages so that's all part of the board um, but I have noticed on the underside of the unit there is an inspection plate that will probably give me access to most of the circuitry I want to get to so I'm going to have a look at that first Let's see if we can uh, get to the underside of the board well, that's good right as you can see they've got um, a number of power amplifiers here for the channels one two three four mounted onto the heatsink um, so this board and the heatsink is all one unit should be interesting to see whether I need to actually get in there um, to do a closer inspection. The transformer is under here. Do I need to access this board for any reasons because of any contacts under here? Well, I've had a look. The board goes up to here, around here, and around here. So all the components, all the joints, uh, all the soldered connections underneath this board are accessible with this plate off. So I don't need to dismantle the whole unit. Um, it's looking very good. I'm going to go around this board now and have a look at individually every single solder joint to see if there's anything that looks a bit odd. For example, like there's a little pin sticking through here that isn't soldered. Uh, so I'm just wondering what that is, whether it's a spare or whether there's something in it because there's a little bit of metal sticking through slightly, but there's no solder connection. It's never been soldered. So I'm interested to see what that is. I'll have a look at all these connections. Um, and if I'm happy with that, I won't dismantle the entire unit because I can actually get to everything I need to from, from this side. So that's good. Okay, I found a connection here I'm not very happy with. It has a capacitor on the other side of it. So I'm just going to do a, a reflow on the solder, maybe add a little bit more. Okay quality of the soldering is actually very good. Not my soldering, the original soldering. There's a few places where there's, there's not much solder on some of the pads and there's little gaps. I'm just 
Can add a little bit more solder to those. As we want this to work for another 30 years, don't we? It's just the occasional one here and there that's a little bit suspect. Well, I want to chase through, there's a little pin coming through the board here, but it's not soldered at all. Uh, sometimes it's very tricky to find out which components what, so what I do is use a little torch, switch it on, stick it behind the board in the right position, and then check on the other side I can see. Okay, so using the torch method, I can see there's not actually, it's just a spot of solder there. There's not actually a component in that area, so I don't need to do anything with that. This board is in very nice condition actually. Just needs a little bit of a, a wipe off and a hoover off. I'm not going to put any solvent cleaning or any other kind of cleaning on it. Uh, the board is very, very good. So what I'll do is I'll just give it a little brush out, hoover out the debris and then box this side back up again. Okay, switch the soldering iron off and reassemble. First last of the screws now, let's turn the unit over. Okay, to lift the dirt off the board, I'm just going to give it a wipe through some electrical, uh, electronic solvent cleaner and then give it a wipe off with some kitchen roll, wipe the brush off as well. And this will help just lift some of the years of grime off of the board. And what I'll do as well is, I'll, whilst I'm doing that, I will check every single one of these uh, spiral wound connections that they've used. Most of them aren't soldered, they're just wrapped around to make an electrical connection. So any ones that have worked the way loose, I will solder them directly. This is actually lifting off the grime really well. You could of course just lift the whole board up and spray the whole board and let the, the muck wash out but uh, I'm not in any rush so I might as well do this properly. Any particular tight areas you're having trouble to get in there and either with the brush or to uh, dry it with the roll is to use the faithful old cotton wool bud to lift off the dirt get in between the components. As you see it's working quite well. Mm, that is looking so much better already. So I'm just going to check these connections here, these wraparound wire ones, just to see if there's anything at all loose on any of them. If they move up and down then they'll need to be soldered. They're all tight. That's tight. They're all okay. The power supply ones, obviously, extremely important. Make sure they're all tight, which they are. Okay, so that's this side of the board um, cleaned. Move on to this side now. You may ask yourself, why is it important to do this? Um, as I said before, any contamination, any debris on the board, if it gets damp at any point, it can cause a loss of function really, especially with electronics, um, with tracking between the devices. So just give it a good old clean. You never know, you might just fix it by doing that. Another advantage of doing this, going around every component on the board and giving it a clean, is it, it focuses you on looking at every single device. Now from that I've actually noticed another problem that I wasn't aware of and that is when I tried to clean down in this area I noticed this this phono jack is all loose and the board inside is rattling around. So I'm gonna have a look at that and sort that problem out. 
wasn't aware of that one and the other problem was that the the crackling on the left and right uh, balance on the volume when you operated that so what is my what do I think about that could it be with these potentiometers in here that the that the tracks are worn on these potentiometers now it's fairly unlikely that someone's going to be sitting here and adjusting the balance 10,000 times and start to wear the tracks out so as these are open to the elements potentiometers the tracks can get dust in there and as you saw there was a lot of dust in there so what I need to do is I need to wash through this with some electrical contact cleaner flush out any contamination uh, rotate the tracks so that it wipes and cleans it out and I believe that should sort that problem out so we've got two issues to deal with phono socket and the potentiometers on the volume and balance <laughs>